Hi there, I am the Reverend Danny Crosby, a Unitarian minister serving congregations in Altrincham and in Ermston in the northwest of England. And I offer this devotion as a balm for the heart, for the mind, for the spirit and for the soul. And it's titled, Tradition is not the worship of ashes, but the preservation of fire, exploring the circular nature of existence. We just keep turning round and round, turn, 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 for every season, turn, turn, turn. We just keep turning as the world keeps turning. Now, cynicism can be very seductive. It's easy to get caught up in all that is wrong with the world and to put down those who speak with a hopeful voice, call them Pollyannas if you like, to say we've tried this before, there's really no point to this. It's easy to get caught up in fear and negativity about the world to say, what's the point? To think, what is the point in doing my little bit? It will make no difference. Well, I don't believe that for one moment. And I knew you, you probably knew I was going to say that. I live in and by hope. There may be no point to things, but then life doesn't work like this. There is no end goal, no end point. Life is a circle, an imperfect one. But it's a circle. We're not heading for some unknown place. We are moving in circles. And the point, if there is a point, is how we live as we keep on turning round and round and round and round. This is a great universal truth. And it's a truth that all the great stories, every great story that's ever been told, tells. There is no end to this. Some might say there's no point to this, but that is the point. There is no end point. Life is a circle and we keep on turning, turn, 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 forever turning. Turn, 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 turn. As I mentioned in my last devotion, I enjoyed much of this year's summer school. One of the many, many treasures of the week are the daily theme talks. Michael, Reverend Michael Allard was the Minister of the Week and he held the last talk, which began with the story that Michael is famous for telling, I think, always loves to tell this story. And the story is a really well-known one, the starfish story. I've told it many times myself. Here's a, here's a version, a shorter version, really. A young boy is walking along the beach when he sees hundreds of starfish washed up on the shore. In dismay and realising that many of them were still alive, he begins chucking them back out to sea so they won't die on the beach. A man comes along and asks him, Why are you throwing those starfish back into the sea? You can't possibly save all these starfish. What difference can you make when there are so many to be saved? After thinking about it for a moment and throwing one more starfish out to the water, the boy replies, Well, I made a difference to that one. You never know what little action can begin when we just can, can begin from, well, from one little trigger, from one little act. If I've learned anything, I know that hope is born from despair and often a new hope is born from despair. What I've learned over the years to, to call despair, a new hope, a fresh hope. But it's up to us to launch out, to begin, to start the tidal wave from that, from that flapping one, from being the butterfly that can lead to a tsunami of love at the other side of the universe, the other side of the world, if you like, inspired by the spirit always. There, there is never an end, a goal, if you like, to anything, to anything. The world keeps on turning. The world keeps spinning round. Life is circular. 
but what the world is that we inhabit and live in depends on how we live each day as we turn up each day turn 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 I enjoyed greatly the theme talks at this year's summer school I can't talk about them all near but I, I'm, I'm going to talk about one actually um, or some of the aspects of one particular theme talk which was led by Lizzie Kingston Harrison who is our Congregational Connections Lead and Liz Slade who is the, the Chief Officer of the Unitarian and Free Christian Churches in Great Britain and Ireland. Lizzie Kingston Harrison is also training for the ministries and is one of the, the several talented people that are coming through currently. She's very gifted. Whenever Lizzie speaks, she impresses me. I had a wonderful conversation with her actually at Ministry in the Making that inspired my thinking or relet some of my thinking, some of my own foundational theology, some of my deep held beliefs, if you like. And she gave a fascinating talk on Joseph Priestley at our last annual meetings. And her contribution to the theme talk this, this summer was both moving and inspiring to someone like me. She is rooted actually in classic Unitarian theology, but with her feet grounded in the present and a vision toward what might yet be, looking toward the future. She, and she looks forward with real hope in her heart. She describes herself as a natural optimist, nay, a radical optimist, actually. She talked about the importance of not focusing on some perceived goal, but to understand that we are grounded in a great historical tradition, a part of history, but that the history is not a linear line leading to something, heading towards some unknown promised land. Instead, she highlights that the journey is circular, as life is circular, that we are not looking for some promised land, some nirvana, somewhere over the rainbow, a heaven, if you like. Well, at least that's what, how I interpreted her talk. I may be wrong, by the way. And that the Unitarian approach to religion is very real and very much grounded in this life, that we sanctify in and through life at least that's how i see it that the likes of priestly and our forebears when they rejected original sin and thus rejected the need to be saved by some figure saved from ourselves that is our mortal original sin and when we embrace the humanness of jesus and therefore this life that this life is sacred that we sanctify this life in and through this life and that we sanctify and are sanctified by it. Well, that's my spin on what she said, actually. You know, you add your own flavour to the, to the mix. Throughout her talk, she repeated a wonderful phrase too, which is the title really for this devotion. Tradition is not the worship of ashes, but the preservation of fire. A living tradition that ours is a living tradition and in, that can inspire us here and now in this life in this moment now and behind her as she spoke was this wonderful image of Hildegard of Bingen's mandala which was a beautiful circular pattern inspired by one of Hildegard's mystical visions it shows the cosmic connection of all angels and all people and all beings celebrating the creation that God has made for us. It's taken from the second vision of the second part of Di Operatione Dei. The emphasis of Lizzie's talk was on this circular nature of life, as I keep mentioning, claiming that that this is actually the wisdom that we find in Ecclesiastes and particularly those famous verses from Ecclesiastes 3 verses 1 to 8. I will share them with you. For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. 
a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to throw away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. I love Ecclesiastes and the idea that life moves in seasons and that there is time for everything in life, that life is ever changing, that life is impermanent, that nothing will stay exactly as it is all the time, and including how we experience life. To quote the wisdom of Solomon and that lovely story about him, this too shall pass. But a mistake that's often made with Ecclesiastes is to think that while it's suggesting there's a time for everything, i.e. the changing nature of life, to see, to understand what it means there, it does not mean that we can do everything, or that we should even try to do everything, to experience everything. It's talk, what it's really talking about is that life is always changing. We can, the mistake we can make in life is that we, we cram everything in and think we can have and do everything. And this was a theme actually that was repeated throughout summer school this year. That it's important to understand what we can do, but not to try and do everything. That we need space, that we need joy and fun and pleasure and nothingness, our souls do anyway. And we need to leave space for others to do what they can do because we're constantly trying to cram in all we can. We have no space for anyone else. We leave no space for everyone else. And if life, need, life needs anything, it certainly needs space. And I think this is uh, interestingly portrayed in a, in a wonderful poem. It's kind of a, a reaction to Ecclesiastes. And it's, and it's by Yehuda Amakai and it's called A Man in His Life. A reaction to the, those words we just heard from Ecclesiastes. A Man and His Life by Yehuda Amakai. A man in his life has no time to have time for everything. He has no room to have room for every desire. Ecclesiastes was wrong to claim that. A man has to hate and love all at once with the same eyes to cry and to laugh, with the same hands to throw stones and to gather them, make love in war and war in love, and hate and forgive and remember and forget, and order and confuse and eat and digest what long history does in so many years. A man in his life has no time. When he loses, he seeks, when he finds, he forgets. When he forgets, he loves. When he loves, he begins forgetting. And his soul is knowing and very professional. Only his body remains an amateur always. It tries and fumbles. He doesn't learn and gets confused, drunk and blind in his pleasures and pains. In autumn, he will die like a fig, shriveled, sweet, full of himself. The leaves dry out on the ground and the naked branches point to the place where there is time for everything. So a kind of a response to Ecclesiastes. But it's an, I think it's a response more to a misunderstanding, a, a, a false interpretation of what Ecclesiastes is really trying to teach is really about impermanence that nothing stays exactly the same but things are not linear there are um, there's all sorts going on all the time life is a circle we 
But we shouldn't get depressed about that or cynical. The truth is we cannot do ev everything. But we can do something. Also, we can fall and mess up a thousand times and we can always begin again in love. Perfectionism is, is a false idol. I'm reminded here of that great 19th century Unitarian, Edward Everett Hale, and his famous quote. I am only one, but I am one. I cannot do everything, but I can do something. And because I cannot do everything, I will not refuse to do the something that I can do. To go back to Ecclesiastes and the wisdom of Ecclesiastes, despite Ecclesiastes' limits, the main point of Ecclesiastes, really, now get ready for this, the main point is there is no point. Now this is not negativity, this is not pessimism. The point, so to speak, is there is no end to this there is no end point that we are aiming for no places where we come to rest there is not a promised land a heaven a nirvana an oz an ithaca remember the point of ithaca is that ithaca gives us the beautiful journey if you find nothing at the end of it the gift is the journey this is the message of Ecclesiastes. There is no point to this, so enjoy the tasks we have before us. Give ourselves fully to it. This is heaven. This is heaven. This is the point. To find our meaning, if you like, as Viktor Frankl pointed out. That heaven is found in the living and not some place at the other side of the rainbow. Yes, seasons come and seasons go, but the fire remains in all of the changes. The spirit is alive in and through us and in all of life. It's a living thing. This is the radiant core at the centre of the thing that we circle around. This is the heart and soul. No one knows what the future looks like, what the future will be. But that shouldn't be what fires or inspires us. What should fire us, inspire us, is the love of what and where we find ourselves and to love where and what and with who we are. To follow the example of Jesus and his message of radical love, radical inclusion, radical optimism and to bless and to sanctify this life. Not perfectly, it doesn't need to be perfect, but with love, imperfect love. Even if we've fallen short a thousand times, come again, come, to badly paraphrase Rumi. But nothing lasts forever. Life is impermanent, forever changing. What is important is to recognise that we are temporal beings, but that life itself is eternal. And that our task here is to enjoy this part as life and to be a full part of life and to take care of what is ours to take care of, our responsibility, to bless this life and to fully be part of this life. And this life is what will sustain us, for this life is where the spirit is alive in, in us in everything this mistake we make is to focus on some perceived goal somewhere over the rainbow a destination that may never be reached the key is to sanctify life to sanctify one another and in so doing we will live sacred lives to paraphrase good old forest church to live our lives in such a way that our lives will prove worth dying for by the love we leave behind. The wheel continues to turn and we get the beautiful journey. Turn, 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 turn for every season. Turn, turn, turn. Turn, turn, 
Turn, turn. The time for everything under heaven. Ecclesiastes, particularly those verses from the third chapter, speak an eternal and a universal truth that generation after generation have found they can relate to. The power of this ancient source lays in its ability to link we who live today with the generations that walk the earth before us and those that will follow, that will join the circle of life. We've all travelled many and varied journeys and we've all lived through many seasons. There's been a time for everything, so many different things. Nothing is permanent and nothing lasts forever. No one can escape the pain of life, but that ought not bring despair. Because if we remain open, despite the pain, we will know life's joy. To be alive, the, the blessing, the ultimate grace. Yes, there's a time to mourn, but there's a time to dance. There's a time to weep, but there's a time to laugh. I've laughed so many times today already. And a few emotions too, other emotions too. For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. And there are many seasons in our lives, just as there are many different emotions. Yes, sometimes we can experience all, all every emotion in one single day, like the four seasons if you live in the northwest of England in one day, there is a time and perhaps a place for all of them. For to diminish any of them is to deny what it is to be fully human, to be fully alive. Yes, there's a time to weep, as there is a time to laugh, and there is a time to mourn, as much as there's a time to dance. I've wept several times in recent weeks, and I've held others in their suffering too. And I've laughed and I've known joy and I've known wonder and I've known awe and I've known true duty and I've been blessed so many times in the same few weeks. I have seen joy and I know that life continues on even in deep grief. As Ecclesiastes says in chapter 1 verse 4, generations come and generations go but the earth abides forever life goes on turn 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 there is a season turn 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 life is circular everything changes but life itself goes on this is the ultimate teacher actually i don't need anyone to teach me life is the teacher who needs a guru they're all infallible anyway. No one person can be the ultimate teacher. Nothing in life is perfect and certainly no human. Though we don't need to be. We're no use to be. Perfection originally meant complete. Well, nothing is ever complete. The circle certainly not. And Ecclesiastes teaches this so powerfully. There is no end point. The circle is never complete. So we need to live with our senses fully awake and alive to everything around us and within us. We need to be awake to life and to our sixth sense, that spirit that's alive in everything, including us too. Look and see for yourself, just pay attention, experience all of life or as much as you can, taste everything, Mwah. bear witness to the impermanence and the ever-changing nature of life. Summer is coming to an end, somebody kept telling me this this morning, last day of summer yesterday, well, it's coming to an end, I don't know if it's the last day. The days we don't forget. Autumn is close. But life life is a circle. Summer will come again if we're lucky. Well, for most of us it will. Experience everything that is under the sun and beyond. But you must experience it yourself. Don't take anybody else's word for it. Know it yourself. Gain knowledge. 
investigate life's nature, the true nature of life, your true nature. Don't be afraid of who you are. Experience everything yourself. Let life be your teacher, your guru. Take in every breath, for each breath is fleeting and so precious. Love this life and let the spirit at the heart of this life inspire your, your living and breathing. We are part of a living tradition. To quote Lizzie again, tradition is not the worship of ashes, but the preservation of fire. A living flame, let's be lit by the living flame. Turn, 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 there is a season, turn, 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 there is a time for everything under heaven. Amen. So I'm going to end this devotion with some closing words of blessing. We need to bless more. We can all bless. And we bless when we give ourselves wholeheartedly to life. So as we return to our lives, may we be inspired to keep on turning, but to turn with our hearts, our minds, our souls, fully open, alive to everything. May we move forward in hope and widen our circles and keep turning and turning and turning and bringing so many in, invite them all and invite everything in. So we encompass all that is life and all that is beyond this life. May we move forward in love as a part of eternity. And may the love of God go with us and may it do so in all that we feel, in all that we think, in all that we say, in all that we do. Go in love, go in peace. Amen. Turn, 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 there is a season, turn, turn, turn.